So I started with a difficult one. Maybe it was too difficult for some of you. This one factors with a 2x and an x. How many of you caught that? Cool, your brain didn't go to jelly over break then. If you didn't catch that before, please start right now and you go three steps. That, signs like pluses and minuses, and a number at the end. And from here, you really can't mess it up. I'll pause. Okay, let's see how you did. Hopefully you knew that this has a plus and a plus in it. Because there's only pluses in the problem. It had to only be pluses in the answers. Okay, and then Carl, what are the two numbers that have to go here and here? Um, one and one. Yeah, a one, change pens. A one and a one, because one times one makes one. All right, and then, did it really work? How many of you actually took a second to check that it actually worked? Did anybody? Okay, on the test, for those of you that haven't taken it yet, strongly recommend you check this because this is where it's all at. If you get a total of 3x with this and this, then it probably worked, and it did. So then how could you go this far and still get it wrong? If you never finished it. What do you mean finish? I mean you're supposed to tell me what x equals, and there's two answers. x equals this, and x equals that. If you haven't already done that, please do it now. because that's the solve part. Factoring is the first part. The solve part is what makes this part of the parentheses zero if you put in negative one? What makes this part zero? Now that's hard to do in my head, so I'd go 2x plus one equals zero. 2x equals negative one. I skipped a step, I'll show you. I subtract one from both sides. And then I divide by two on both sides. Who had negative a half before I ever got there? Nice work. Then there's your two answers, negative a half and negative one. Those are called the roots, the zeros, the x-intercepts, and the solutions. There's four names for them. Now, if any of you took this test you know, before break and you didn't like your results, you got the results back because I did grade them pretty quickly and showed you. If you didn't like those results, with Normally, I make you do corrections on the test, but since we're going to have a really short turnaround from now to tomorrow, if you want to take the test tomorrow as a retake, you don't even have to do corrections. You just have to take it again tomorrow. Okay, so if any of you feel like, yeah, I, and I, there's no risk, because if you had a B before and you retake it and you get a C, I'm not going to lower your grade. Okay, so this is a weird retake because you can have the immediate retake tomorrow if you want, without doing corrections. So let's practice a little bit more of the factoring that you gotta know for that test. For some of you, many of you got good grades and you don't wanna retake it, so you'll just take the basic 20 tomorrow instead. All right, here's another kind that you had to know. 4x squared plus 6x plus two. Why is that one harder to factor? Well, all the numbers are bigger. So do you remember that you can factor something out to the front called the GCF? There's a hint. I'll pause for a second while you try that. So this one, you factored out a 2. I hope you noticed there was a 2 in everything. And then you have 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. And I hope if you have a short-term memory, that looks kind of familiar. 2x and x plus and plus, 1 and 1. And how do you check it? You check it by going like this, that and that. Does that make 3x? Yes, it does. And then if you actually really, really wanted to check it out, you'd have to multiply everything by 2, and it should come back to this. And there you go. That's one of the harder kinds of factoring. All right, here's another kind of factoring. Again, this is just a review, but for some of you that haven't taken the test, pretty handy timing. Do you remember how to factor that kind? It's called a difference of squares.
Did you say x and x, three-step process, right? And did you say a plus and a minus because you want it to come out to negative 16? So these two numbers, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. And last but not least, square root of 16, four and negative four. Raise your hand if you had that one right, cool. Then what if it said equals zero and they wanted the solutions? When x equals negative four and x equals four. They're the things that make it equal zero. Those are the solutions, okay? All right, next up, factor this one x squared minus 9x plus 8. Here's the trick on this one. You get x and an x, no problem. That's easy. It's the signs. To get a lot of people think, well, it's a plus and a minus because there's a plus and a minus in the problem. But it's not that. How many of you knew it was a minus and a minus? Mm-hmm. That was the key. Because to make a positive 8, this number and this number will both need to be negative. Grace, can you finish this one off? There are several options to multiply out to 8. Give me one of them. We'll try it. 8 and one make an eight. And does that together make what we wanted? Well, the inside is negative eight X and the outside is negative one X. Does that make what we wanted? Yeah. Yes. And if you ever get the exact opposite of what you wanted, like let's say they wanted positive nine and we're getting negative nine. If you ever get the exact opposite of what you want, you switch the signs. How many of you had that one right? All right, cool. Any questions on that one? All right, next kind. Do you remember that if there's a negative in the front, you need to factor it out? Well, I'm going to make you practice it. Negative x squared minus 3x plus 2. The only thing that has to get factored out here is the negative. So the GCF is negative 1. So I saw somebody eating the lunch today. Okay, anyway, so we're going to take out a negative 1, and that just, do you get that makes everything the opposite of what it was? How many of you had that one right? Okay. Now, do you get this won't factor further? Some of you might have thought you could factor it again, but you can't. I'll just prove it to you. If I use an x and an x, and I'd have to use a plus and a minus because this came out negative, there has to be one negative. Then it has to be a 2 and a 1. And no matter how you arrange it, with the 2 there and the 1 there, or with the 2 there and the 1 there, it's not going to make plus 3x. So that's done. You do have to factor out a negative, but in this case, that was all you could do. All right, so here's one more that's like that. Negative 4x squared plus 9. I'm going to give you this hint. You have to factor out the negative, but then it does factor again. If all you do is factor out the negative, you're going to get it wrong. Pause for a second. Okay, so I know some of you picked up that it was a negative, and then you got this to 4x squared minus 9, but I'm hoping 
several of you caught that this was one of those perfect square deals. What's different about it? You gotta start with 2x and 2x. If you didn't get it that far already, try to take it from there. The next, just one thing at a time. Math, the best thing is just one step at a time. Next, you gotta figure out what signs you want. It can't both be positives, that wouldn't make any sense. So can it both be negatives? No, that wouldn't make any sense either because two negatives wouldn't make negative nine. So one of them has to be positive, one has to be negative, one's three and one's negative three, and there it is. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Sweet. Okay. So we have just a couple more, uh, this time with just a really big GCF in it. Do you get that they all have a big number in them? Can anybody tell me what the biggest number is that you think goes into all of them? Do you get you to have a calculator and you could test stuff? 10 is a very common answer, but it's wrong. There's something bigger. 20, very good. We're gonna finish this one and then it's lunchtime, so do your best. Get this finished up. Don't stop earlier, I'm gonna make you finish. And it'll slow everybody down. Okay, Dice of Destiny, who should I call on? Row five. Person one, Jack, that's you. Tell me what you think goes here and here. Don't give me the whole thing, just the first step. Uh, just X. X and X. Next person, row five. Second person, Jackson. Do you think it's a plus and a minus? A plus and a plus, a minus and a minus. So what are the signs? If you do two negatives, you would get a positive here. So change it. Oh, minus. minus and a plus. All right. And then last but not least, row three, person six. That's you. Six and one. Six and one. And did I put them in the right spots, in your opinion? No. You are correct. Because when I tried that, I get the, like, I didn't get what I wanted, so I'm gonna put the six here and the one here, and then I check it with the outside and the inside, and you get five X and it is lunchtime. After lunch, we'll work on that worksheet. Okay, so we're back from lunch, and we had just factored this all the way. We got this, and then if I say it equals zero, do you get the two answers? Solutions would have been negative six and positive one because that's what makes this zero and what makes this zero. So those are the solutions. They're also called the x-intercepts. They're also called the zeros. They got four names and they're also called a weird name, the roots. So those are the roots of this equation. Okay, so that covers it. That, that is the topics that you had to know for the uh, factoring test. Uh, and <clears throat> if you're gonna take that tomorrow, either the test or the retest, either way is good with me. Uh, and if you're not in need of taking those, you'll just take a basic 20. So the rest of today, we're just going to work on that worksheet uh, that I handed out. And if you're good at this, you should finish it before we're done for lunch. So hopefully you go home tonight with nothing that you have to do. And that's all I got for you for today.